Good morning to the hardy souls that are still with us. I say good morning. It feels like evening, but it is in fact morning. Deb Birchall and Cheryl McIntyre. We're in the ladies' open final. We are also preparing on the stream table for the men's open final between Corey Reese and Mark Boyle. That one will be getting underway shortly. Corey just having a knock on the table. I think Mark's going to have one too. Not, not certain, but I suspect so. Yep, here we go. So we'll keep our attention now on the ladies' open final here. Deb, 3-0 up at the moment on Cheryl. This is a race to six. And an opportunity for Cheryl now. But it's not an easy one. She's going to have to take this one into this near centre pocket. Needs that cue ball to slow. It has just about, but she wanted to finish straight on that. And I say it has just about. She doesn't look entirely happy. Perhaps she has just overrun that far enough that she's not on the yellow. Rick Lloyd still awake as ever at this time in the morning. Cheryl really, you feel, needs to pop this yellow. Well, she's not going after it. She's going after the one on the cushion. That's a very good shot. But it does leave Deb an opportunity now to go four up. Don't see any huge problems on the table for Deb. I feel like that yellow near that far centre pocket is just a little bit too far to be able to use that as a big pocket and perhaps nudge the red out into a nicer position. I think she might just have to drop this one in. going to be a difficult shot at some point in this finish. Several options available. And that was not one of them. He chose to go up table first and then try and come back down. Instead, it's time for a bit of safety, but there's a, there's a double on here for Cheryl. And the other yellows all go. Thank <laughs> you. 
just a containing shot, so she obviously doesn't feel that uh, the red passes the other red. Deb does have the option to just thin off the red she's closest to. Move the cue ball on the cushion. But that red does pass, so that's an error by Cheryl. Deb, though, is going to have a very, very tricky red. Before what you would imagine if she gets it would also be quite a tricky eight ball. Well, she lined up the double, I think, earlier on. There was a, a touch of annoyance on her face. But we are going to take the main camera over now on the stream table to watch Mark Boyle and Corey Reese. see there's a couple of uh, questions in the chat over whether we have both streams um, going. I'm actually not in a position to tell you, I'm afraid. The only thing I can say is if, uh, if there's not a second one on the IPA YouTube channel, then either there's one being set up right now or, unfortunately, we're only going to have the one stream, but I, I genuinely don't know. So... shot from Mark. Needs another. Gonna score across the face of the yellow here. Perfect. lips from Mark Boyle and a little knowing look to Corey not the greatest shot he'll ever play Mark but he got there in the end Deb 
Virtual is studying the table hard there. But to no avail. I can tell you she is 4-0 up. So Alice, to answer your question, I don't know if she got the double, but she got the uh, the frame on the board. Visitors of the commentary box. Bobby George has come and sat down next to me. Good afternoon. Uh, morning. I think it's mo yeah, it's morning. Your microphone's turned off, mate. There we are. Extension, please. Yeah. Evening, everybody. Morning, whichever way you like to put it. Yeah, I suppose it depends where you are in the world. But yeah. Been a very interesting weekend, I must say. <coughs> Who, what's your Would you like to expand Dan? on that? Or <laughs> um, what, what's my prediction? Yeah. <sighs> I mean, the head has to say Mark Boyle. Yeah, it would have to be Mark Boyle's favour, but but Corey's been in phenomenal touch. Yeah, um, and Corey won this Open last year as well, uh, at this very venue as well. So, so I would have to say uh, Corey is the defending champion for this. So he's got a crown to defend. So could the pressure be on him for this very? Uh, I don't think he, I don't think the players really look at it that way. To be honest. Um, I've never heard someone go sort of, oh, I won Tour 1, so I'm defending Tour 1. Um, I think that's true of perhaps more stuff like the Masters and the Worlds. But um, I don't feel like each player really recognises a difference between each Tour event. They just see them as open events and pro events. I could be wrong. There yeah. might be some out there that see it yeah, that there, way. There's many different uh, ways of looking at it. I what I haven't won one yet, but if I won, say, one event, I'm looking at defending that for the next year. There's ways of looking. At everyone that looks at different ways. Like everyone looks at uh, different puzzles on the table. True. Corey's got a puzzle here to solve. Yeah. I think he's just about perfect on this. An ultimate red. Yeah. I think he will be all right. He can just about see enough uh, of that red to the bottom corner. Easy pickings for Corey Reese. He levels the scores at one frame each as we turn our attention to the outer table where Deb Birchall is 4-0 to the good at the moment against Cheryl McIntyre. 
I was just out there watching that, and uh, Deb Birchall di wasn't very happy with the way she's playing, but um, in my old fairness, I think she's playing pretty well still. Yeah, I'm sure her opponent is devastated for her right now. What a great chance again for Deb. She can take the uh, yellow to the right of the cube all long. Yes, yes, yes. I, and I will uh, honestly say I, f I, f I fancy Debs to uh, clear up from here. Frame number three, Mark foiled to break. Match tied at one frame all. Time running. That's a very nice shot there from Debs. She doesn't like to stay out of the winner's enclosure for too long, Deb Birchall. And uh, yeah, I have to say, it does look like she's going to make the top sp step of the podium once again. Yep. As Mark Boyle breaks off in frame three. Yep. As we see there, very nice uh, angle to get some position on the black. And Mark is 100% going to take reds here. They are about as easy as they come, to be honest. Even better. If he chooses to, he could play red off of yellow into the right centre at some point to uh, open up the pocket for the eight ball. As we see Deb fly into a 5-0 lead. She may not feel like she's playing well, but she's certainly... That's not reflected in the score line, if it's the case. When you look at uh, choosing a colour set, Dan, what, what pocket uh, do you do? You look at which pocket for the black to go in, or the red before you put to play get on the black first. I mean both, to be honest. Like I don't. Uh, both are in equally as important. There's no point in going for a finish if it's not on. Um, so if the eight ball doesn't have a pocket, then that's the first thing you look at. If it does, then, yeah, you look how to get to it. I think most players will tell you that they work their routes out backwards. Um, but equally, you've got to be ready to accept a change in route. You know, you, you can't be rigid. So if, if you come out slightly awkward or, or in a slightly different position to where you were expecting, you've got to be prepared to you know, shift your, your pattern, as it were. Yeah. I, I'm more of a, rather than backwards, I'm more of a forward-thinking player where uh, I I, sit, I see the ball that I want uh, to get on the black and I, and I see the most selective option and then I work my way forwards to that uh, particular ball. So I'm, I'm like a game of chess, I am. Great finish from Mark Boyle. Three finishes from the break as the backdrop is <laughs> slowly wheeled away by the looks of things. Could this be the final frame of the ladies' open final? <coughs> Whether it is or not, it's a dry break from Cheryl McIntyre. So here is the first opportunity for Deb Birchall to secure yet another title. Frame number four, Corey Reese to break, trailing two frames. Had four titles in five events in the last tour season. Looking at that dry break there, Dan, I would absolutely go for yellows there. And I would fancy Deb to clear up from there. Well, um, remains to be seen. Corey with a decent break, but an awkward, awkward eight ball. He doesn't really have a yellow to start with. Unless he can play that one down the rail, but it does look tight. 
as to whether that goes or not. It's all about uh, getting that orca black out and sorting that out. The sooner that he does that, he'll be happier the better. I, I really fancy reds. It's just about which red he uses to uh, get that black out, in my personal opinion. Yeah, I mean, if that black is a made plant with the yellow, then... You, uh... I feel like he's got to go reds. But he should be able to play into that at some point. The sooner I, the better. I personally would use the red that's uh, just below the two into the middle to cannon into the black and uh, make it a skill shot, the uh, second but to last red. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Now, Deb Birchall, oh, it's gone wrong. It's gone wrong. Is there a glimmer of hope for Cheryl McIntyre or can Deb find a bit of a Hail Mary? We have to go cushion first to pot her last ball. Now, Corey doesn't quite have the angle on that red to right centre to be able to play into the eight ball. I would argue he could probably screw into it. It's, um, it's choosing to get a, a better angle, I suspect, to play from the one nearest the right centre pocket. Yeah, I, I think he's going to now take the one down the rail now and uh, then the one into the left centre pocket after that. Uh, I think we'll see, but if he can get the angle to go right centre first and into the eight ball, I think he'd do that. He's played it for the opposite pocket, but it, it was the same red that I was uh, thinking he would get, try and get position on. Everyone has their preferences of how, how they uh, play their shots. Yep, and there is a lovely shot from Cheryl McIntyre. I think at the moment, priority one for Cheryl will just be get a frame on the board. Yeah, she needs to settle the nerves. She'd feel a lot better. Yeah. Corey Reese will feel a lot better after that shot as well. That is a frame winner. Obviously, I mean, it, it's possible that he felt there was a risk playing into the eight ball, that the eight ball might have gone safe, so he's decided to come off the, off the back cushion and into it. Yeah, and it's worked out beautifully. I, I believe she's got an absolutely great angle to get back to get on the black, and here we see Corey Reese, just phenomenal player, and he's uh, now playing the red with absolute play, plain ball. What I would say in snooker terms, just play that normally, and got a easy red. Uh, e sorry, easy black down the rail and uh, jobs are good and two all waits to be seen <coughs> Deb's got back to the table and, uh, got out of a snooker I think she's going to be in another one we'll probably return to that game shortly but I would imagine Corey Reese is going to make light work of this eight ball which he does so here's Cheryl and yep Playing a good snooker. Not only that, getting a bad ball out. So Deb is in. Deb is in a spot of bother here. It's a, it's a very easy uh, get out, but it's uh, leaving your opponent not a shot on. That's the only trouble. It depends. She could play this two ways. She could either go for this off two cushions, or just try and lay up behind the yellow. And that is exactly what she's done. And that is a terrific shot. That is a terrific shot. That is exactly how I would uh, try and play my shot. Um, there's no point in go going for it because if it comes out wrong, you could be snookered on the black yourself. So that's the best percentage shot in my particular opinion. A decent escape from Cheryl, but it has left Deb 
This long yellow, and if she can screw back sort of a foot 18 inches, then I suspect that will be curtains for this lady's final. And that is absolutely plumb. That's a great shot from Deb. Absolutely amazing. Yep, she really is a class act, and she is the 2024 European Ladies Open champion. Congratulations, Deb Birchall. Commiserations, Cheryl McIntyre. A terrific run to the final, but in the yeah. end, undone by Diamond Deb Birchall. I, I, I think we'll be seeing a lot more of Cheryl McIntyre in this season to come, for definite. Certainly fingers crossed for her on that one. And moving back then to this European Open title. Mark Boyle with just an absolute monster of a cut break. Yeah, I've took a lot of tips from Mark Boyle for my breaking uh, um, from last season, I must say. And... Uh, I'm very confident with my breaking now. That's something I've took from Mark Boyle after last season. Is that just from watching or a conversation or? Uh, no, no. It's uh, just from what uh, particular watching. Uh, watching uh, um, in the audience, watching on the stream, looking back at it, his uh, games, and also. Um, just experimenting the cut break because I never used to cut break. I was always a front ball breaker and just mesmerised how much uh, how much more of a positive break you get. Like, it's just much more easier and easier to control, I would say. You're, you're more likely to... Uh, leave a cluster with a front ball break or make it make a harder uh, clearance with a front ball break in my in my personal opinion but if it if it's not working for you uh, either side on the cut break why not go for the front ball break at least you got uh, two ways of uh, cutting uh, two ways of breaking I'm so sorry to say but yeah I'm glad I've got both in my locker now Well, Mark is certainly showing the positive aspects of the cut break, that's for sure. This has been a phenomenal standard so far between these two great competitors. Question in the comments, is there a particular player that's credited with initiating the cut break? I have to admit, I don't know the answer to that. The, f the first player I can think that I saw using it to this kind of effect is Mark Boyle, and it was back in about 2017, I think. It was uh, I'm fairly sure that was his first year on tour. Um, and I specifically remember the first time his particular style of cut break, that ridiculously hard hit, um, it essentially won him the, I think, English Open title in Bradford. It was Tour 2 in 2018, and it was a final against Jordan Church. And it was an absolutely unbelievable performance from Mark. Um, and a lot of that was down to his cut break, because he just never had an, a, a difficult shot to play in pretty much the entire match. The great performance. Sorry to cut you off there, Dan. We see uh, Mark Pickworth uh, handing out the trophies to uh, the... Ladies Open 2024 uh, winner and uh, runner-up, Deb Birchall and uh, Cheryl McIntyre. Yep, photos and socials and all that jazz. Yeah. Who would you say is the, apart from Mark Boyle for a cup break, who would you say is the like best front ball breaker? on the IPA tour. Number six, 
Because there's so many. Yeah, there are. Um, Craig Marsh has got to be up there. Yeah. I My, my personal opinion, it's got to be Gareth Hibbert. Yeah, he's he's in the conversation, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, after this weekend, I'd be tempted to say Dan Davey. His break was absolutely phenomenal. I haven't seen a lot of his matches. It, a lot of t- the time when it... Um, when his matches have been on, I've been playing. So uh, I can't really comment on a lot of his matches. I, I only saw uh, one of his matches earlier. And uh, yeah, his breaking was absolutely amazing. So I can't comment enough uh, on his to set to have a comment on his uh, breaking. Corey Reese with the first dry break of the match, talking about the break. It's uh, bad news for Corey. Great news for Mark. You've got to say, it's a, it's a decent looking opportunity on yellows. Can't really see too many issues on the table. And he's gone red. I like either colour here, but at that very moment in time, it was definitely reds because yellows were just uh, a little bit more harder to uh, clear, especially with that yellow that is now nudged out by those two reds at the time. I think he's landed a little bit straight on this red as well. Yeah, he's fine here. He can just, um, I mean, absolute worst case, if he's really, really straight, he could probably play it off the yellow as a big pocket and come around with two cushions, but I'm fairly sure he'll just screw out of this. My concern with going reds initially was uh, the two reds in the bottom half of the table. Yeah, that was my concern as well. If it, I, I believe uh, he's going to put this one in the middle here and uh, he's going to have to play it really dead weight. He doesn't want to uh, play it too soft so it doesn't hit a cushion and leave a pocket, which he's done really nicely. And uh, I think it's landed a little bit high. He would like it to come a little bit further down, but I still fancy him to clear this. Has that red held up in time? I don't think it has, you know. I think he's in trouble here. No, I, I definitely think he's in trouble, yeah. That is the worst case scenario that he wanted to happen. Definitely advantage Corey Reese now. <coughs> Needs to get on with it, does Mark? Clock's ticking down. Yeah. Oh my word, that's one of the shots of the century. Oh my god. That is an Can we get a replay of that? That is an unbelievable shot from Mark Boyle. We definitely need to see a replay. Well, that is a a shot that we will watch back for the ages. That is one of the best shots that you will ever, ever see. It's up there with, oh, I can think David Adenall did that in a, who was he playing against? I can't remember, but yeah, there was a David Adenall shot. Uh, Dean Shields, he did a very similar shot to that. Superb stuff.
question time, Dan. What is the best shot you've seen to get out of trouble since you've joined the IPA? It's a very, very good question. Get out of jail free card shot. There's, I mean, there's a highlights. There's a few highlights packages um, on the IPA YouTube channel that you can look for. There's a couple of shot of the tournaments and a couple of, uh, I think they were called hot shots back in the day. It was before I was part of the team, but when I was on the tour, um, Scott Gillespie played one of the the best ever. Where he had no shot on, or it appeared he had no shot on, and he's essentially played a red off the two jaws and back across but on purpose it was sort of insane um that one that one there from mark is is actually well up there i i'm currently uh watching the 2018 champions cup of uh of the ipa and god almighty the shot of the tournament so far that i've seen is the jack stabbed it really high and such a massive banana shot and potted the uh, colour that he was on. I can't remember what colour he was on. And that was just the shot of the tournament I've seen so far. I've still got plenty of weeks left to watch. I mean, we've had so many over the years, really. It's impossible to call like one. Um, I think Simon Ward's finish is probably the best I've ever seen. It, the, the one at the recent World Championships. Yes, I've... Uh, I've seen that and I was here for it. That was one hell of a clearance. What would you say to uh, the people back at home that uh, never been on a pool tour before and uh, want to challenge themselves to new levels? Do it. Simple as that, just do it. The atmosphere is great, the people are great, the tables are great, the arena's great. Um, you know, I, I, you can enter single events, and I think, I think for someone who, wow, what a break. Um, I think to carry on answering your question, I think for someone who doesn't necessarily know if they're at the level or not. I think entering a single event to, to sort of test yourself is a good idea. Mm -hmm. And I think if you, if you really fancy yourself as a player, then go the full tour. Like just, yeah, if you can afford it or if you can find a sponsor, then, then do it. I, I absolutely uh, love the tour. I, I, regardless where, how well I do, I just love the tour because the people, the, the people that run it, Mark Pickworth, Kev, yourself, Dan Davey, uh, who also does commentary. Absolutely amazing people. And it feels like a family. And yeah, I'd agree with that. And that's what it is all about. That is what a pool tour should absolutely feel like. Back to the action. Mark Boyle, despite that great break, has left himself... Oh, my God. That's a great shot. Well, he had to take on that red. Yeah, He had to get it. It, or it's probably frame over if he doesn't, let's be honest. The man is a, an absolute animal. He's just the current best player in the IPA at this very moment. He's the time. best player in the world at the moment. Yeah. I, I genuinely believe that. Um. <laughs> when it goes your way, it goes your way, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> Corey will be feeling sick after that second red going in. I mean, uh, in in truth, I don't think the second red really mattered. As long as it didn't go safe, then Mark was, yeah. you know, it, it didn't matter at all. But um, if anything, he might have liked it. To stay up. Yeah, just, just for an extra. Because that red uh, by the black here is what you're trying to say. Yeah, it's, it's not the easiest shot in the world, but um, right. it might have given him a, a chance to get on that nicer. Having said that, he's he's ninety percent not going to fail from here. Um, probably closer to a hundred, to be honest. Yeah. He's just going to leave that red long up to the top right, 
or up to the top left, as it were. Yeah, he's le he's left himself a shot on rather than no shot, and that's the best way to uh, play it. And yeah. most people would say, yeah, he's plumbed straight on this simple stun shot. Care required. It's definitely not an easy shot. Use all the pocket. That's what it's there for. Mark Boyle leads by five frames to two. The beat goes on in this open final. But Corey Reese is staring down the barrel. Three frames behind. He now needs to win 5-1 from here against the number one. In order to secure the title. That is a tall order by anyone's metric. Very much. I don't see Corey Reese coming back from this at all. Um, but you never know. He uh, was uh, very far down um, at last year's Open. I believe he was... Uh, how? What was he down to Matt Steeper last year before he got to the final? Do you remember? Yeah, 6-1. Um, 6-1 six one. Six one down. 6-1, six he won 7-6. Yeah, so, and, and he won 7-6. Okay. Yeah. So you still can't write him off, even though he's 5-2 down to probably the best player in the IPA at the moment or in the world, some might argue. So just never write anyone off is what I would say. Ooh. I think Corey was worried for a second, but he's got a ball that that break deserves. Oh, I fancy him to take yellows here. The top one to the top corner, I mean, and then work yeah, his way down. Yeah, he's definitely taking yellows. <laughs> there is almost no doubt in my mind. Yeah. Extension, please. <coughs> he just needs to uh, stay calm and uh, and relax it whilst taking all these shots. Who's the local uh, most local uh, player to you, Dan? That's uh, on the professional circuit. I actually don't know. Um, it, I genuinely don't know. There's there's no pros within probably an hour and a half, two hour drive of me. Um, so which one's closest is Dan Davies? Got to be quite close, and yeah, he's a good two hour drive. Yeah, I, I live in a part of the country that doesn't have that many clubs and tables and um, and professional players. We don't have any. We've got one that's good enough. Ian Whitehorn made an amateur final on the IPA. Um, has run very deep in open events as well. Um, I think he made a semi a couple of years back in the open or a quarter. So he is comfortably good enough. Um, but yeah, I I think it's probably Dan Davy. Yeah. Any amateurs near, near you that have uh, entered this year? Me? Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. Again, there's a couple. There's um, I I'd like to encourage more of my local players to go on the tour. Yeah, well, uh, that's definitely what I'm trying to do uh, as well at the moment. I like, encourage more to. Uh, get on the tour, especially if they've not even uh, been on a tour, uh, pool tour before, or even if they've just played their local tour before but not a national tour before. It's just 
something to uh, get into and uh, test, uh, get, gain some experience under your belt. Lee Shepherd is in the chat. Good evening, Lee. Go to bed, mate. You've had a long day as well. Congratulations on a good performance, though. You play very well, mate. Mark Boyle, still two frames away from claiming yet another IPA title. Keep up to good work, Lee. You'll do all right this season if you keep playing like that. Corey Reese, on the other hand. Well, he needs an error, realistically. From Mark Boyle, probably from the Boyle break. Because once, I mean, and they're rare enough, but once Mark gets his hand on the table, it is really hard to imagine him making an error of any kind. They do happen, they're just very rare. Have you been to any of uh, Mark Boyle's uh, Lola's pool parties yet? No, I'd love to. Um, and I'd love to make the final as well. But unfortunately, I've been busy for the two qualifiers that were remotely oh, near Oh, there's a black in. Nope. Oh. And I've got a wedding on the day of his actual pool party event. But um, yeah, I, I wish him absolutely all the best with it. It's, it's an awesome thing that he's doing. And apart from being great fun and for a great cause, um, just I think I'd follow Mark Boyle to the end of the earth, to be honest. He's salt of the earth. and Absolutely. That, that is one of the reasons why I took tips from him from last season. And just because he's a lovely bloke. I mean, I've had breakfast with him. I've sat with him. I've s spoken to him numerous times, and he's one of the most nicest guys ever. He's very, very kind. Good opener from Mark. I think... The fact that he's gone red tells me that that red will pass the yellow to the top left, but it might be one of those where it comes off the jaw on the back of the yellow. Um, I think that would be perfect now because it would open up that pocket. If he doesn't feel that he can do that, then he might have to go into that red. I think that's uh, lined up for a skill shot at very, very some sort, some point. Even like now, he could try and skill shot that yellow in. Yeah, I mean, he could. So he could do it now off the red on the balk line. Yeah. Um, which he may do. It, it could go wrong, that. If that goes wrong, he, he can use the red. Oh. Oh, he's got oh away with that. Oh, my God, that is a great shot. I, I don't think that's fully as intended, but um, he'll no, certainly he take it. didn't intend that. That is exactly how I would have played it, trying to use the skill shot to your advantage. But, yeah, God almighty, that was a little bit of luck there. an angle on this red. I think there's a bit of um, perhaps a slightly bigger gap between that yellow and red over towards the left hand side than there looks because he's playing on it from here I think but um, it looks tight that. I think he would have liked to have gone down a little bit further there. I think that's a little bit of a tighter gap than he would have liked. Yeah, not sure. Yeah, look, he's playing it with a bit of right-hand side, so perhaps yeah. just throwing it in. But, yeah, nicely done. Very good stuff from Mark Boyle, and I feel for Corey Reese because there's not a lot he can do at the moment, to be honest. When you're playing against Mark Boyle, you just got to expect the best from Boyle, and you got to play your absolute heart out at the moment because otherwise you're go you're going to get stuffed um in in your personal opinion uh like if you don't prepare yourself to play your heart out then yeah Frame 
you got to expect to uh, have a very tight game or only win very few against Mark Bolt in this very sort of form. 6-3 to Boyle it is. Rick Lloyd is preparing the rack for potentially the last time. Just. It's an amazing ref, Rick is. I mean, yeah, and, the whole, and, and all the refs as well. Yeah, the whole team deserve a mention. Yeah. I, and a special shout out to uh, Tom Goddard, the new ref uh, that we've had uh, on this tour as well. Yep, done a fine job this weekend alongside the usual faces of. Well, they say the usual faces. Ben Taylor Fuente has been away for a while, but is back as well. So Tom Goddard, Ben Taylor Fuente, Rick Lloyd, and of course the lovely Fiona Atkinson, who has kept the red wine flowing. <laughs> <laughs> she loves as usual. red wine. No, she, I mean, yeah, all four of them. Have given everything they possibly could this weekend. The whole team have. It's been it's been a challenging weekend in terms of timing. The fact that it's one in the morning and we are still broadcasting should tell you that. But um, exactly, everyone's pulled together. It's been a fantastic effort. And a special shout out to Brawny for organising a tournament, every tour event, and especially the World Championships, and just gone. Like, she does an amazing job. Yeah, she's a Trojan, that's for sure. Great break from Corey Reese. Just what the doctor ordered. This is definitely the break he would have wanted from 60 down Extension. to try and get Extension him back into this uh, match. Yeah. It, <coughs> got to take yellows here. I, I think the shot here is probably to take the yellow he's closest to to the right centre and then try and land on that. That one over on the right-hand side to the same pocket. Yeah, that's definitely how I would have uh, gone for it. <coughs> I don't see other, any other path, to be honest. Oh, there's always another path. What do we know, eh? Corey Reese proving us wrong, perhaps. That will happen a lot. You'll get used to it. He does have that problem yellow, though. I don't... I say that. Does it go through the gap between the two reds? I'm not 100% convinced, but it looks more like it does from the overhead than it does from this angle. Yeah, I'm very convinced it does. He's gone down there now. If this holds up, it doesn't matter. Great shot. That is a very good shot. Not sure if Mark Boyle's tapping his appreciation for the shot on the, the leg of his <laughs> chair there or if he's just got some sort of rhythm going through his head. I think it's the latter. Yeah, I'm not very sure myself, to be honest. I don't know. We'll have to ask him about that. Maybe a concentration technique or something. Is 10 past 1 on Monday might be just a way of keeping awake. Well, you're not wrong. You're not wrong there at all. <coughs> Perhaps it's something that we should be trying. Having said that, Jebaro, I'm not the one just sat there watching. I have to be here. Do you, do you have work in the morning, Jebaro? thought you were asking me then. I was like, no, I've got an eight-hour drive home. Corey looking good to take this to another frame, though. But 
even though he's going to get down and knock this eight ball in rather sharpish. He may have played his last shot in this tournament. So much will depend on the next strike of the cue ball from Mark Boyle. One good break, and it could be curtains. One dry break, of course. And it might be his last shot until a potential deciding frame. Most important shot of the match is uh, definitely the break off. If you don't get a good break off, it, you, your opponent has every right to uh, attempt the reverse dish or uh, put you in trouble straight away. buzzing in that room all day today and all of a sudden you can hear a pin drop there are very few people left here tell me about how busy it was yesterday Dan oh my god it was non-stop was it I mean it's been it, honestly since not o'clock Friday morning it's been it's been absolutely manic um, it's difficult to remember another event like it to be honest yeah, I don't re remember how uh, how busy it was the last time I was at an IPA event uh, since I joined last uh, March, I think it was. Oh, cue ball's close, but it stayed up. And that's bad news for Corey Reese and Corey Reese supporters. Because Mark Boyle's got the opportunity the table first in this frame but it's not a straightforward finish I think he's having a good look at yellows if he if he can drop that yellow in the left center first Welsh fans will be having their fingers crossed that Mark Boyle uh, misses a uh, pot here to give Corey Reese a chance here yeah it's hard to see um I feel like there is a gap between red and yellow. That There's that yellow closest to the right centre pocket, uh, the bottom centre pocket from this camera angle. And I feel like there is a gap big enough for a cue ball between red and yellow, and you could pot that in the centre. And if he could get on that from this shot, then the frame really opens up. Oh, oh my that, God. That's wiped its feet, that's for sure. He's not on that shot, though. And I don't think the... Does that yellow pass? Does the top I of think those he's got two to use yellows? the jaw. I think he's got to use the jaw, Dan. Yeah, you can only use so much jaw, though. But still, that won't open up that yellow that's next to the red. I think the yellow that's next to the red goes. So... Oh. 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 I'm not sure if he's played it that way or not, but there's no hand up from him. Yeah. There's a little look from Corey Reese. But um, I suspect Mark has played that in that case. Now he turns his attention to his next problem, which is how to get nicely on that yellow that's on the rail. Because you don't want to be playing that as a plant. So that's why he's going to take the one over the corner bag first. Yeah, he needs to get this yellow out into a nice open area. The worst case scenario, it it nudges the red and goes right next to the black. I wouldn't be surprised to see him not move that yellow, just because I think it's risky to. Um, but it depends how much contact he feels he can oh. get on it. Yeah, see, it, it was a big risk, that. Yeah, that was the only trouble I uh, found with that. Shot. Now, the finish is still on here. If he's straight enough... On that one near the, the centre pocket, if he can screw that back to the top rail, or the bottom rail, sorry, if he can get on that last yellow, then all he's got to do is drop it in and he can take the black to the top right. Round oh the red. Oh, my God. That is a shot. 
That's a tremendous effort. He might be a little bit straight, a uh, little bit too much angle to play the shot that I suggested. I'm not sure. He might just about be able to do it. If not, he's going to play this with pace and bump into the eight ball. I'll tell come, you what. Come round it. Does this go? It doesn't look like it. I don't think that goes, Dan. Well, it doesn't look like it from the overhead, but the overhead can be misleading, to say the least. Wow. But it does look very tight. We this. can only look at it and see that it, he only has a half ball. This for the title, and it's there. Brilliant, brilliant performance from Mark Boyle. I think he was literally unbeatable in that game. Nothing that Corey Reese could do about that. But commiserations to Corey. He's had a terrific tournament. And congratulations to Mark. Yeah, very much congratulations to Mark Ball there. When he's in that sort of form, it's he's basically unbeatable and pretty much the only man to beat. And yeah, who can stop him in that sort of form? Well, evidently no one. But for now, that's all from us from in the commentary box. And I imagine we will hand over to Mark Pickworth in a moment for the trophy presentation. So bear with if you want to see a little bit of chat from uh, Mark, Mark and Corey. And uh, we from the commentary box, we'll see you soon. Thanks, guys, and wow, what an incredible final that was and what we've just witnessed there is an absolute dish fest. And uh, Corey, just come up, just have a few words with me, please. What a standard final of what was that? One dry break. How, how do you feel right now? Yeah, it's nothing much I can say, really. He's, um, he played unbelievable, didn't he, really? Um, yeah, like uh, I was thinking when he was clearing up to go 6-3, the way he's playing, the way I was playing, I think I've got to have two dry breaks and that's just... The way he breaks is pretty much impossible, isn't it? So I had my, f you know, my fingers crossed and he was breaking that. But, um, yeah, he played unbelievable. And I know it's been an incredibly long weekend for pretty much all of us, including you guys. It's, you know, still here late tonight playing and that. You know, are you pleased with the way that you performed over this weekend? Yeah, it's nice to be playing well again. I um, didn't have a great year last year, so I know I didn't win an event, but semis and a final is not... Uh, not the end of the world. And did you have any expectations here for the 2024 season? Because it's an incredible start, even, you know, to make this final. And you didn't have a bad run in the uh, professional event as well. Yeah, I never set any targets, but yeah, obviously just turned up to try to win the new one. Uh, obviously, I've come just one short, but positives to say forward, I guess. Yeah, definitely so. And uh, well done for reaching the final. Thanks right. very much, right. Corey Reese, everybody. Mark, please just step up, just have a few words. You really do keep on doing it. How do you continually, mentally, put on a performance like you just did there? I mean, that, that, that final ball into the middle pocket at that pace to get the position, you know, to do that at this time of morning, it's incredible. Your question was? <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I just want to know, how do you continue to keep doing it? I just, you just, you're an autopilot because you're keep, it's when, if you keep playing all day, you're okay. It's the minute you've stop, start, stop, start, that's when you, like, you can, you can lose your concentration a bit. So luckily, I finished my semis and then five minutes later, I was back on for this, you know, so maybe that's how I was okay, you know, but I, I played perfect there. So, but I knew I had to against Corey because Corey's been playing really well. So I, I knew I had to play out my skin to win and I did. <laughs> And he's made one mistake, if you want to call it a mistake, a dry break. Yeah. You know, that is the level that it seems to be happening at the moment for yourself. Yeah, well, look at my break on Saturday. I couldn't, I couldn't keep the weight on the table. Question. You know, so I, 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 I done a wee tweak. I went, I, I went back to my old break, so I did, uh, using my own cue. So uh, I just felt like I was bouncing the right and it, tol it told. But then I went back to my old break. and So I think I... I Depends who's setting them up as well. <laughs> We've got a good ref in the final. Uh, no, I just changed that and I just felt so confident I was getting balls because I was hitting them as good as I've been hitting them for a long time. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, you know, you have broke like God here in this final. And uh, I know I mentioned in the studio yesterday when the break wasn't really going yeah. that well for you. And I said to, you know, the audience that was obviously listening at home that you will probably get up early next morning and you'll be working hard. Did, no. did you do any of I that? I slept at 10 o'clock. <laughs> <Did you? laughs> yeah, was, was that in, was your preparation, I, I, I was it? I was in playing on Saturday night. My match didn't start till midnight. So I was in here at about 2 in the morning. So I thought, well, that's my practice, you know, for... And I just went back to my old break and I, I moved away a wee bit, you know. So just these wee things make a big difference, you know. So it's so obviously worked, so I might stick with it for a bit. And so a little bit of back. It, until it goes peat tong again and then I'll <laughs> need to change it. <laughs> well, I'm sure you will, but a little bit about expectations for 2024. Incredible start. You've got to be really chuffed with obviously winning the first um, Open event as well. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Can't ask for a, a better start, to be fair, because I know how hard it is to win one of these, you know, like, and it's... Uh, to win one of the seasons, a great, great effort. But uh, to start off with winning an open at the first weekend, I can't complain. We well, have won the first one, and uh, well done to you. You are the IPA European Open champion, Mark Boyle. Everybody. Well, that is us just about, just about to wrap up right now. And uh, thanks to everybody, all of you at home that has watched, all the IPA team, all the referees. Craig has done a fantastic job onto the TV and the players to, to have the incredible standard throughout has been superb. We're back in around six weeks' time. We're going to be at Coventry and we'll see you then. Sleep tight. See you soon. Good night. Thank you. Selector. We want to learn 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 to